Hi, Eric Gibo, EricGibo.com, and today I'm going to speak about five confusion many people make uh, speaking about photography. So let's start. When you hear uh, people speaking or you read in Facebook groups or things like this, you realize that some people uh, they use the wrong words and or the wrong concept. So uh, sometimes when it's a concept was maybe a bit worse, but when it's just a wrong word for a vocabulary problem with uh, some uh, concept. Uh, you realize that one day a guy said something wrong and everyone started to repeat and then everyone thinks it's one one thing when it's not, okay? So these are the main five uh, confusion I'm going to speak about. So first, massive confusion uh, on vocabulary is people who confuse uh, depth of field with bokeh. So uh, bokeh, bokeh, many people say different way, okay? So if you read on, on the Facebook groups, sometimes people uh, telling, I want to buy a lens to uh, get a bokeh. I want a bokeh lens. I say, eh? What? What? What do you say? Uh, well, I made a video explaining the difference between depth of field and bokeh. I'll leave you the link here. But if you don't want to look at it, uh, watch it. I'll, read, I'll make it a bit shorter here, okay? So depth of field is where uh, my, my picture starts to be in focus and until where it is in focus. So unless you do hyperfocal, uh, you always have a part that is out of focus. Otherwise, yes, everything in focus and then you have no out of focus part, okay? So the out of focus part is actually the bokeh. But you don't say I buy a lens for bokeh. You buy a lens and you any lens and you use it to have a shallow depth of field and this shallow depth of field you will see the blurred part this is the bokeh and when people uh, years ago were speaking about bokeh they were not telling I want to buy a lens for bokeh no I want a lens that gives a bokeh with such aspect which can be a round uh, circle of light or creamy or not creamy or that and they, they actually discuss the aspect not the quantity because the quantity is well any lens where the depth of field st uh, stops when you have the the out of focus part and the quantity is there the, the only thing the, the other thing is the, the the aspect okay so when people say i want to buy a lens for bokeh uh, they should say, I want to, to buy a lens which bokeh is such aspect, okay? So it's different, okay? Depth of field is one thing, bokeh is another one, okay? Confusion number two. Well, lately many uh, companies are uh, making uh, filters and I've reviewed several already and uh, many people contact me and say, I want to buy uh, a ND filter to protect my lens. I said, no, you don't want an ND filter to protect your lens. Uh, what you want is a neutral filter and you realize they have a big confusion uh, ND filter neutral density density because you have some density that will cut light the same as if you had uh, sunglasses and neutral because normally it doesn't have any color cast doesn't uh, do any color shift on your picture uh, although some do even some expensive one the Lee one for example they give some kind of blue cast okay but uh, really it's important uh, to not make the confusion because you normally don't want a camera that has a filter that cuts light all the time because uh, it's like you're reducing the light that gets into the camera and normally you, in some situation, you will need it but you don't use that kind of filter for protecting your lens. I don't in get into the debate if it's important to protect or not the lens, okay? That's another story. But still, so what you want in this case is a neutral filter which is a filter like your uh, window at home, it's completely clear and uh, normally there are some coating for uh, UV or whatever, okay, or scratches or water or whatever, okay, but it doesn't cut light in any ways, it should not cut light in any ways, okay, so uh, it's important, neutral density is one kind of filter and uh, protection filters is a neutral filter, not neutral density, it's different. Confusion number three. Well, many people, they start comparing uh, sensor formats, which is a big mistake. You should not get into that. You use what you use and that's it. You don't have to think uh, how it sounds on a guitar if you're actually uh, playing the, pl the piano, okay? So that's simple. But still, uh, very often they tell me, yeah, but 2.8 in my uh, APS-C, it's like F4 on a full frame or uh, 2.8 on my uh, Micro Four Third, it's like uh, F5.6 on my uh, full frame. And then I say, yeah, yeah, in depth of field, you're right. No, 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 everything, light including. No, 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 
this. One thing is how it affects the depth of field. It's true that uh, 2.8 on my uh, micro four third is the same depth of field as 5.6 on my full frame. Okay, 2.8 on my APS-C is the same depth of field as f4 on a full frame. But regarding light, it's the same. 2.8, it doesn't matter. Now, obviously, when I speak about depth of field, at the same distance, same aperture, obviously, uh, and uh, same distance from the subject and same uh, focal length, okay? Okay. But what we speak about, the aperture right now. So if we look at light, it's exactly the same. Uh, whether you're on 2.8 on a full frame, APS-C, micro four third, large uh, film camera, large format film camera, it will be 2.8, same light. And they start to discuss that with me and they argue about it and they convince I'm wrong and I just ask them get a manual light meter and tell me where is the button where you actually indicate the size of the sensor or the film there are none why because it's irrelevant light is the same doesn't matter if you 2.8 on a full frame APS-C micro four third large format medium format does not matter light is the same okay so yes if uh, the, the depth of field is important to you yeah maybe when deciding the kind of gear you want to use it's important to check that but regarding light getting it to your camera is the same thing okay confusion number four uh, very often I hear people telling me uh, Eric I got that new camera now I can really go with very high ISO so I don't need to use a flash anymore well 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 putting ISO higher let you see more but not better okay so I use this word to make sure to explain okay normally when you don't have much light or it's really dark the aspect is really flat, not much shadows, not much uh, volumes, nothing. So if you put the higher so higher, yes, you will see more, but it will not be better. It will still be flat, no shadows, no volume, nothing. So the only way to get volumes back, shadows, all this is to put your own light, which is uh, lighting the place. OK, so there's no other choice. So uh, some people, they're really confused. Uh, I high so with uh, military uh, night vision uh, binoculars okay and when you see this picture with night vision uh, binoculars you don't actually see you see more but you don't see better it doesn't look better it just you can see okay so that's fine for paparazzi or sometimes you have no other choice uh, you're not going to flash uh, flashlight your uh, the VFL tower for example or a full straight obviously you're going to put your ISO higher but uh, you have no choice you cannot do that you cannot flash them but in the case we make picture to someone or uh, very often you see a social uh, reportage or wedding all this if you use a flash you will give volume you will give life uh, back to the to the place okay or in product photography so it's really important not make to not to make this confusion uh, ISO is a spare wheel it will not replace lighting because that's why it's different and don't forget that photography is writing with light if you have no light you're not writing anything okay so it's important uh, light I ISO will not replace lighting it will save you in some situation but not replace it's really different okay and last confusion uh, people who don't like HDR uh, photography, very often they say, oh, I don't like HDR photography. You have funny colors, funky colors. They're really horrible. And I agree, they are horrible colors, but this is not HDR, okay? So what is the confusion there? Well, they're confused with tone mapping. Why? Well, first, what is HDR? HDR is high dynamic range, which is not something new. It's actually, when you look uh, the way uh, Ansel Adams was uh, working on his pictures in laboratory, uh, it was actually doing high dynamic range, which is, uh, I made a video about that, about telling that years ago, uh, even before digital photography, uh, pe people were still, uh, were, were already retouching pictures, okay? but. Uh, it means you're going to manage to see more than what your camera can actually register. It is uh, the shadows. Uh, normally, your camera cannot get from really dark, dark part to really, really high lights and register everything properly. So the way to make an HDR is to make several pictures 
and after you stack them together you keep the part that have the best light so uh, if you're not a photographer you don't even notice it's on HDR photography why because the photo actually looks the same as your eye so you look at this place a landscape and say oh that's really nice and a, an experienced photographer will say that's an HDR how do you know that because it's impossible that your camera get this properly exposed and that dark part properly exposed it's impossible so this is an HDR but otherwise no one will notice it so why are people confusing with the tone mapping well basically because there are the same software or same programs and apps or whatever you want to call them that do both things HDR that stack picture together and you keep the part that is uh, better uh, with the best better exposure okay and they also allow you to do tone mapping which is uh, remapping colors so it gives a strange effect so obviously uh, a tone mapped uh, picture remapped picture can be actually also an HDR but an HDR can be just an HDR so people started to use this software that called HDR and they think that everything is the HDR and this is not it depends on what you're doing and a real HDR has no funky colors so don't confuse HDR pictures with tone mapping because some people say no I did an HDR and they tell him ah that's horrible you haven't seen the picture you don't know what I'm speaking about obviously okay so these were my five confusion now probably many more but that was uh, for this video okay so thank you for watching the video if you feel it may interest other people please share it on social networks if you have not done it yet please subscribe to my youtube channel the small button down here is a small bell if you click on the bell get notified when i upload a new video my website erichibot.com if you have any question can leave a comment below i'll leave you links of margie on amazon links to everything i've reviewed by kf concept and sendmark and also a link to my paypal account in case you wanted to make a donation thank you very much please take care of yourself and speak to you soon bye